Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. I feel like I haven't filmed one of these like full brand or full face of insert brand name here videos in a while and the main reason I haven't done one is because for a little while, I don't know if you guys have noticed, maybe you haven't because it probably, my efforts have probably been like in vain. I've been trying to slow down on the purchase of makeup mainly because one, I've gotten to this point where I really don't wear it day to day and I was only buying it for kind of content. Not that I don't love makeup, I absolutely do. Um, and I do hope that that shows here, but unless it was something that I was like really, really drawn to, uh, I just wasn't buying it. I say that now, although ColourPop's got a collection out that I've really been eyeing and thinking about. Um, so I just haven't been buying it. And to be honest, a lot of times I was like, I would only have maybe one or two products of a given brand and then I'd have to fill in the rest. And that's quite a lot of product to get. But at least once, possibly twice a year, Tarte does this thing where they say, for this price of like, I think it ends up being, I have it up on my phone, I was prepared. So for me, because I'm Canadian, it was $84 Canadian, you get to create your own custom beauty kit. Now it's not customizable in the sense that you can pick absolutely anything from their website and just go crazy. They sort of give you an option. So it's like, okay, you can choose one of these two foundations, one of these two mascaras, and you sort of customize and build your own kit. And it's a really great opportunity to get to try a new brand, try a lot of products from a new brand uh, for what to me does seem like a pretty reasonable price. So I did purchase one of the kits and then I sort of went along and thought, what do I have of Tarte, which to be honest is not much anymore. I used to have a lot more and over the years it's just gotten uh, really, really, really called down. But I ended up picking up a couple of products to fill in gaps. Now I did realize I missed two things. Um, I do not have anything for my eyebrows. Now my eyebrows aren't that bad on their own to be completely honest, so I could just go without. But if all of a sudden I go from one shot to the other with new eyebrows, just know the reason I'm doing that is because it's not a Tarte product, so we're not testing that out. And I didn't buy an eyeliner. Um, so we're gonna do one of two things and when we get to that point in the video, I will let you know. So the first thing I will tell you guys is um, the kit you got to choose a foundation, an eyeshadow palette, a concealer, uh, a mascara, a lip product, and looks like I picked a setting spray, but I don't know what the alternative would have been. And then you get a makeup bag. Now mine did not come with the makeup bag for whatever reason, but Tarte has fantastic customer service. I emailed them yesterday at like, I don't know, like eight o'clock or something like that and just said, hey, I just realized I never actually got my makeup bag and they said, okay, well, unfortunately we can't send out a replacement. So we'll just refund that part of your purchase. And I ended up getting a refund of like $11 or something like that, which I guess is the value of the bag within the kit. And to be honest, it worked out for the best for me because I don't need another makeup bag. I have so many. I get them every year at Christmas with all my matte collections, but I can already see I've been rambling for over three minutes. So let's just get straight into this. So the first thing that I picked was the Tarte Hydrating Primer Base Tape Hydrating Primer. So it comes in a kind of like pump. It looks a little spray-like, but it's not. Um, so we're going to use that. I can't remember what the other one was. It might've been like a shine control or something, but since I do have extreme, like I can't tell you how good this feels to put on my face. I literally woke up maybe 20 minutes ago and I was like, okay, I have I have a ton of errands to run today, but I knew I needed to get this filmed first. So I thought I'll film, get my makeup all done and then go out, do my errands, whatever, edit when I get home because I have to stay up all night tonight. So that is what the, also I have like, I'm having like a breakout right here. It's driving me nuts, it's super painful. So it does feel hydrating. It is a little sticky feeling if I'm completely honest, which is not necessarily uh, ideal, but it is what it is. It does feel pretty good. Uh, hopefully it's going to soak in in the next like minute or so. Now something that I already have, and you guys will have seen me use this on my channel, heard me talk about it, is the Timeless Smoothing Primer. Now this is not for me an all over the face primer. It is thick. It is a pore filling primer. So for me, I just take a little bit on my finger and I just sort of like really, really work it in into those areas where I've got some larger 
pores, maybe a little bit more creasing, particularly for me, I get a crease right in between my eyebrows because I have expressive eyebrows, as I have been told by every everybody basically tells me now, like, especially, you know, since what has happened in the world has happened in the world, we wear masks all the time, so you can only really see this much of people. And I've been told that my eyebrows give me away. Um, people can tell when I'm unimpressed, when I'm, uh, you know, angry because my eyebrows just have a mind of their own. Tom will say it to me all the time. We'll be sitting on the couch watching a show and he'll come over and just say, relax your eyebrows, they look concerned. And I have to say, they just go that way. I don't mean for them to go that way. But you know, it just sort of happens. So the next thing that we have is we got a foundation choice. Now there are two choices. You could either try the found sealer, which a couple years ago came out and I was really excited about, but when I ended up trying it, I didn't like it. I found it was just a little too thick for my liking. So instead I decided to go with the uh, C Hydroflex Serum Foundation. So this is what it looks like here, sort of in a little blue squeezy tube. I got mine in the shade 20B Light Beige. Hopefully that's gonna be good for me. I don't really know. It's looking a little more deep than I intended, but depending on, like it's a very fluid, can you guys hear that? Fluid consistency. So with that kind of a consistency, uh, it'll probably sheer out pretty well. The color looks all right, actually. It's a bit darker than I thought, uh, but we'll just put that straight on our face. I don't love the bottle, if I'm honest, and I'll tell you why, because it is so fluid. I feel like it would just, like it's already running out all over my little palette. Um, and for me, like I always put a little bit on and then add more as necessary so I don't waste product. This obviously can only be stored either flat or upright, but without a lid on, I wouldn't want to leave it flat and you can't store it upright. So I just think that that kind of a design is not good for during while you're doing your makeup because you're just asking to spill foundation probably everywhere. So the color is actually pretty good for me. It is a a little more pinky than I would probably normally go for, but all it's doing right now is evening out my skin tone, which is great. Um, I do like a lightweight concealer, or excuse me, foundation, <laughs> full coverage concealer, but a lightweight foundation. Um, I like my skin to show through. The sun decided to peek through the clouds right now and is like blinding me over here. Um, so it feels pretty good. It is very fluid. It is definitely like doing something. Like I can already see how much this area of my face where I had that uh, large and in charge zit has gone down quite a bit. And that was just one squirt did do my whole face. I might get a little bit more just to sort of extend it downwards because it is a slightly different shade than the rest of my body right now. Um, but it feels pretty nice, I must say. I'm pretty excited about it. I like it. I th can see it as a foundation that I will continue to use because that's the other thing you always worry about in, you know, particularly trying out new products from new brands. Um, I don't know if Sephora still does it, but a lot of times if you maybe want to try out a new foundation rather than buy a full bottle, you know, put yourself in that area of risk where you just don't know what's going to happen. I think that they will allow you up to like three product samples. Kind of want to like sit further back. Um, the light is just really, really shifting in the room. So I apologize about that. They will allow you three, I think, product samples. So that's how I've been able to try like the found sealer in the past and know it doesn't work for me because they'll give you just, and it is, it is just a teeny tiny amount of the product, but it helps you figure out your shade really easily. It helps you figure out if you like that foundation or whatever. So next up, I got a concealer. I think you could have gotten the Shape Tape concealer. I really, I think I'm gonna have to close a curtain. There we go. Uh, and it wasn't like it was bad that the sun was shining through, but it was like going in and out of behind clouds. So just for that, you know, the sake of consistency, I just closed a curtain. So anyway, I think you could get the Shape Tape Concealer. I instead decided to go for the Creaseless Concealer. Now I think I've tried this in the past, but I think I tried it in the wrong shade. So I went with a very light shade knowing uh, that I could brighten it up later. So I picked the shade Fair. And I think in the past I've gone like light medium because I was in this phase where I thought your concealer had to match the rest of your face, which is 
not true. Okay, this is a very, huh. I'm gonna be honest, I don't love the consistency of this. It is super thick and not in a good way. Not in a way of where I feel like I'm gonna have full coverage, but more so in a way of I think I'm gonna have a difficult time blending it. Um, Cause a lot of times when I put concealer down, I let it thicken up a bit so that it is easier to get it to stick as opposed to just blending it all out. This one, you don't have to wait, that is for sure. Now, did it blend out pretty well over here? Let's kind of do it again over here. It did blend out nicely. It is definitely covering some issues. It's just very thick. And with it being so thick, that seems kind of counterintuitive to me that it would be creaseless. Now, maybe that makes complete and total sense and that is sort of how it works. The thicker it is, the less creases, but I would think the thicker and goopier it is, the more it would settle out weird. I don't know, that's just my opinion. There we are, we have got that all done. Now, for setting powder, I kind of went back and forth on what to use for a setting powder. Now this is something I purchased outside of the kit. I ended up getting this Tarte Shape Tape Glow Powder in the shade Starlit, and I did it for a number of reasons. One, I have tried the loose powder from Tarte before and I don't really like it. Um, I think I got it in a mini size, to be completely honest. I, I honestly don't remember. This seems pretty full size, but I thought I ordered it in a mini, whatever. So I got this instead because I thought, you know, I can use it to sort of set my whole face. It will give me a bit of a glow, which I've already got quite a bit glow going on because I think that this foundation being more natural does have a tiny bit of a glow to it, but I'm okay with that. Um, so I thought we would try this and then, okay, oh my lanta. It just went everywhere. Like I just touched it and it just like disintegrated. <sighs> It's all over my pants now, which is just ideal. Um, so I've got it just on a brush and I thought maybe we could use that to sort of set our makeup. And I was originally thinking I would also like put it a little heavier in some areas of my face. Excuse me. My voice is coming and going. It's early in the, it's not early in the morning, but I did just wake up. So, um, and I was gonna use it also as a highlighter, but I think what we might have to do for a highlighter is like pick a color out of a palette that's got some like glitter to it. We'll see. It does look really pretty all over the face. I think it gives a really, really nice like finish. Cause a lot of times when you do put powders over liquids, they cling funny. They can give you a strange texture. This is just a really even texture, a really even glow. Like I don't think it's too much glow. There's now a hair or a brush fiber in my eye. I'm having a day, just a day. I think it's like actually like caked into my makeup, which is quite interesting. That's a new one. So I do like it. Uh, it is just very, 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 like there's a lot of kickback and a lot of powder. Keep that in mind if you're ever gonna try that. For a bronzer today, I happened to go digging through a box of old makeup I was trying to get rid of and I dug out an old Tarte Park Avenue Princess. This is a waterproof Amazonian clay bronzer. I just have a really little one. Uh, it's not that I don't like this bronzer. There's really nothing wrong with it. The color is just not my favorite. And because I've always had minis, I've always had a hard time like getting a larger brush into there. But I didn't want to pay for a new bronzer and I knew that this was sitting somewhere in a box of like giveaway to friends or whatever. So I'll just pull it out of the box. And hey, maybe if I really like it after today, I will keep it. Um, because I find that that does happen to me from time to time is I will go back through the boxes because as particularly with everything that happened lately, it was a lot harder for me to get the products to friends. And Megan realistically has just as much makeup as I do now. And a lot of it is just because I give it to her, like I pass it on to her. So she probably doesn't need much more, but it was a little difficult to actually get the makeup to my friends. So because of that, uh, it sat in my house a lot longer than I maybe would have initially liked for it to, and some of it started going bad. So every once in a while, I go through it and I kind of check the consistency, the formula, the smell, all of that fun stuff. And if I feel like it's no good anymore, I throw it out before anybody can even get their hands on it. And while I was doing that, I ended up finding that Amazonian clay bronzer. So 
you know, whatever. So for a blush product, I decided to try one of their cream blushes because I've tried the Amazonian clay blushes so many times and they are really, really nice and they come in so many colors, but I wanted to try something new. So I got this Sugar Rush Beach Cheeks, bron not bronzer, blush in the shade Ocean Girl. Um, so it's a super cute packaging. It comes in like a little shell, really, really cute. I think there were three shades I could have chosen from. I just went with like the standard pink kind of a shade. Uh, I am going to, if I can find it, I've got like a couple brushes. This needs to be cleaned so bad. I can just feel it that are like a little bit more flat and compact. So these are really, really good for applying cream blushes if you don't feel comfortable doing it with like your finger. And you can kind of just like stipple it on, which is nice. This particular brush is a Natasha Denona 19 brush. I wouldn't necessarily recommend this brush because uh, it is expensive. It's really good brush, don't get me wrong, but it is super pricey. So, you know, you can definitely get these kind of brushes from drugstores. And with anything really, if you're starting out in makeup and I don't know, you know, who's watching this or whatever, in terms of brushes, while I do think that eventually if you're going to, you know, be wearing makeup day to day or make a habit out of it, while I do kind of feel like, um, I'm just going to blend it with my finger a little bit because it got a little more than I wanted. While I do feel like eventually it could be worth your while to invest in a decent set of brushes, initially I think that you can buy kind of cheaper brushes from the drugstore. You could even buy them from the dollar store if you want to until, not that, no, hmm, okay, knowing that those aren't gonna be like your forever brushes, but those are your entry level brushes. Those are the brushes that are going to help you learn which shape of brushes you like because there would be nothing worse than if you purchase, say, a brush like this from Natasha Denona that I think was at least $50 and then you end up not liking the shape or you don't ever use it or anything like that. Like I have particular brushes from MAC. These are the 221 brushes that I use all the time, all the time. I can never have enough of them. But maybe for you, you like a more flat brush, a denser brush, a uh, fluffier brush, whatever. I think it's important to find out which brushes work for you. And then from that point, once you have a shape kind of nailed down what you like, then you can invest in some better brushes, take care of those brushes and keep them for forever. Because the last thing I would want to see somebody do is purchase a brush like the ones I've just been showing you for as much as I know that they are. And then you discover you don't like them. So I think that there are other options. You know, e.l.f. makes pretty inexpensive brushes and they're actually pretty good quality as well. So you could go out and pick up a couple brushes there, try them out figure out what works for you, what doesn't. You know what I'm saying. All right, the sun has shifted again and is doing weird things. So my lighting is like really all over the place. I do sincerely apologize for that. So I did actually just prime my, did I prime my lids? I have a memory of doing it. Did I do it? I must have. So I did just prime my lids so that we could start applying some eyeshadow. So the palette that I picked up out of the, uh, col like the build your own kit was the leave your mark eyeshadow palette. It's a super, super neutral, like eyeshadow palette. Um, just looks like this lots of neutral shades. And then there's also this longer one, which I thought could maybe be used as a highlighter. And then outside of the build your own kit, I picked up the sugar rush sweet tart double shot which is another super neutral palette but just a little bit more versatile in my opinion like there's just a lot more also how cute is this it looks like a little latte it's also better quality it feels more like the like tart tartlet palettes than the flimsy ones oh it broke how sad so one of the shades did kind of crack on me and break a little bit i would bet if it's soft enough. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just squishing it back down into the pan. Uh, I'm going to lose that swirl on top, but I would rather lose the swirl and keep the shadow than lose it all. Wipe it off the mirror here. Anyway, so it did break a little bit on me in transit, which is kind of to be expected. These come from quite a ways away, but I just thought that some of the browns in here were a little bit more uh, versatile, a little bit more forgiving. So we are going to be doing some kind of a neutral something, something or other, probably using a combination of both of these palettes. So I am gonna bring you guys a smidgen bit closer. I'm also gonna try not to drop eyeshadow all over the floor. Wish me luck with that. So I'm going to start with the shade 
Let's start, I wanna make sure I use a bit of both. Okay, so from the Latte kind of with a double shot palette, is that what this is called? I'm going to go into the shade Whipped Cream and I'm just going to kind of lay a base. I haven't used Tarte Shadows in such a long time. I do really like them. I think, wow, see now it's too dark in here. I gotta go and open that curtain up again. Give me a moment. All right, so doing that actually made things way, way worse. So I'm hoping that this is okay. Uh, I'm hoping that my camera is just going to adjust to the lighting and that you guys are going to be able to see. I do apologize. Um, I can't control the sun as much as sometimes I may want to. So anyway, like I was saying, I used to use my uh, Tartlet Lit Palette all the time. I loved it so much, but over the years I've just kind of gotten away from it. Not that it's bad or anything like that. I just have. So now I'm using Dolce de Leche. And I'm going to use that to sort of build the crease. Tarte does make really good shadows. And Tarte, for me, has always been um, one of those brands that I consider, like, mid-range, if, if that makes any sense. And what I mean by that is, like, they're not as expensive as some other high-end brands that you may find. Particularly, like, considering the Sephora family. Like, obviously, you can get Tarte products at Sephora. Um... And then you can also get, you know, like Dior and I would say Hourglass is pretty expensive as well. And then you get like the Tarts and the Macs that are still really, really good quality. They're just a little bit more inexpensive price wise. Um, so I would say it's like lower high end and I don't mean that because of quality. I just mean that because of price point. Honestly, I haven't even looked at that other eyeshadow palette yet. I've just been digging into this one. I'm now in the shade Cinnamon Swirl. Really, really building up my crease. But I think there's a dark brown in that one that I'm a little more drawn to. So we'll kind of dip into that in a second. I'm so annoyed with what my camera is doing. It's not like adjusting well. So I'm going to have to sit really, really close it looks like. Because it's just not adjusting well to the light and I, I don't know how to fix that if I'm completely honest I bought this camera because it is intelligent and it's supposed to automatically do it and sort of fix itself and it's not fixing itself and that's really really annoying me so we are going to go into the color respect out of this palette it's just a really dark brown kind of has a little bit of like a purple to it and I'm just going to use that kind of in the outer corner just to darken it up this is Sam's you know old faithful makeup that I do all the freaking time. Every once in a while I will try something new, go outside the box, new colors, new uh, techniques, whatever. But today is not the day for that because we are trying to film a full face video and that is long and I have to go out afterwards and I don't really want to walk out of here looking like a crazy person because whatever I tried didn't work out for me which is kind of how my luck works. So I'm just taking a clean brush and I'm really just blending that all together. Just like that. Now we are gonna take a bit of some sort of color. Let's do Shake It Off out of this palette and let's kind of brush it underneath just for a little bit of like depth and definition under there. It's also got a bit of shimmer to it, so that's kind of pretty. Just like that. Now for a over the lid topper, I'm going to use Like You a Latte out of this palette. It's just very, very shimmery. So I end up getting eyeshadow actually on my eyeball. Um, I don't know how other people feel about it. I'm completely comfortable. And this might be weird. Touching my own eyeball. It doesn't bother me. It never has. Like I know some, and uh, I know some people like it, it freaks them out. Um, and I know some people can't do it, but like, I've never had an issue doing it and I don't know where that, but I can't put eye drops in my eye. Go figure. Um, so I just put a little bit of shimmer there. Now I am going to, as I sort of said before, use, let's use the color Encourage out of this palette. It's right dead set in the middle. Or, no, let's use Love because it is just a little lighter and we're gonna use that as sort of a highlighter because I don't have one. That's the other nice thing about like, if you're trying to keep your makeup collection smaller, maybe, or you don't have the means, the financial means, the space, whatever it may be, 
to buy all sorts of product all of the time. A nice thing that you can do is kind of look at the makeup that you already have and sort of say, you know, how can I use this in multiple ways? How can I turn this into something multi-purpose? Um, just like I just did there. Uh, so we're going to take that dark, dark, dark color again, and I'm just going to take an angle brush and we're going to use that to do an eyeliner because like I said, I messed up a little bit and I forgot to buy a Tarte liner. And the only one I could find in my giveaway bin was like a minty green one. And that's not going to work today. I also find that this is originally how I used to line my eyes. Um, way back when I was in high school and especially for people that are younger and maybe you are going to high school or you're using it every day this is a really nice way to sort of finish off a look add a little bit of depth and definition like you guys can see just how little uh, amount of product that made a difference it really really shaped my eye really pulled the look together but it's not so stark as like putting a black eyeliner on or trying to put a wing so if you're starting with makeup and you, it makes you nervous to maybe do eyeliner or something like that. Try using like a deep brown shadow and an angled brush. This is how I did my makeup for years and years and years. And to be honest, I've always felt like I had more control using an angled brush than using like a felt liner or a pencil. And I think a lot of that comes because when you use product on a brush, you are in charge of deciding how much product is on said brush. You are in charge of loading it up. So you can load it up a lot and, you know, really make it crazy and defined or whatever. Or you can load it up a little bit and just add product bit by bit by bit, build up a little bit at a time. And I find you just have so much more control over how it is. Whereas when you use a felt liner, like you've got all of the product basically in your hand. And if it decides to come out or you push too hard or something, you know, all of that, I mean, it's never going to happen, but like there is that risk of like all of that product ending up where you don't want it. Whereas there's so much more control when you sort of do it this way. So that is eyeshadow. Now I did pick up a pair of lashes from Tarte just because I wanted to try them. These are the lash smoothie, um, lashes. I think that is what they're called. Wispy length and volume. So this is what they look like. I'll just show you guys really, really quickly. So they're really pretty, really natural looking. We're not going to put them on today because like I said, I do have a ton of running around to do. I have to go pick up some clothes for work. Um, I had intentions of getting my passport photo taken and I don't think I should do that with like big fake eyelashes on. So we're going to skip that step. For mascara, I picked the uh, Tarte Man Eater Mascara. Now you could either pick this or I think the Lights Camera Lashes Mascara. I chose this one because I hadn't tried it yet. It is in black. Looks like this has like little leopard print all over it and I just want to see what the wand looks like. I also have tried the Tarte Big Ego Lashes. Okay, this reminds me quite a bit of the MAC mascaras that I like so much. Uh, they've got like a really straight up and down sort of a wand. They're kind of rubberized so they're really, really good at gripping and separating your eyelashes. Alrighty, so I did just curl them really, really quickly with my eyelash curler. Now we're going to try some of this mascara and on first impression it seems like the wand is pretty good it's not super loaded up with product uh which is nice some wands depending on their shape uh can get really really clumped up with product so the issues with my lashes are my own fault my eyelashes are bent kind of weird possibly because of how I just curled them that is not the fault of the mascara so I like that mascara it's nice it does give you some volume some thickness but it's kind of subtle which is nice and it sort of makes your eyelashes look a lot fuller which for me also not a bad gig so i'm going to let my eyelashes kind of dry before we set because i think that was the last thing that i got just got a box of like boxes really sitting in front of me the last thing that i bought was the stay spray setting spray from tarte that came in the box as well and it is full 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 size but i'm gonna let my mascara dry a little bit and while that dries we're going to put on a lip paint so this is the tardis lip paint in the shade salty it's like a 
kind of like peachy sort of a shade. I do like the lip paints. I do find them kind of drying, but whatever. I haven't worn one in a really long time, so let's just... Ah, uh, it's on my teeth. So this color is not what I was expecting it to be. Just if I'm being honest, it is much lighter than I think I thought it would be, which is okay. It's still pretty. Um, I might just have to, it dries super, super quick. And because it's such a light color, it was quite streaky, had to go over it a few times. Um, it's not my favorite color. It's just a little too light. It's uh, really, really muting my lips. So I might have to go back in a little later today and maybe just put like a topper on it of some sort, maybe like a lip gloss topper that has a bit more color to it, something like that. So my lashes are pretty much dried. So let's spray. I'm hoping that this has a nice spray pattern. Let's just see. Yeah, it does. It has a really, really fine wide spray. I would say prime your sprays before you put them near your face because the initial spray did have a big drip. And you wouldn't want that to go directly on your face. It smells pretty good. It kind of has a little bit of like a uh, cucumbery kind of smell. It's really nice. So that is that. That is a full face of Tarte makeup. Like I said, I think that the kit really helped me to be able to do this today. And I'm really happy with the results. I'm really digging this foundation. I think it's fantastic. Like it's holding up really, really well, doing really good things, full coverage. Tarte eyeshadows are great. This is something I already knew. The lip paints, not this color in particular, are really nice. But I'm really excited in particular. The concealer, I haven't decided how I feel about it yet. Is it working today? Yes, I need to kind of see how it goes all day to see if it's really creaseless. But that foundation for me is just the standout star. And also that powder, as much as it kicked up a lot of dust, man, did it give really, really pretty results. So that is everything. I do think that the custom kit deal is gone. But if you keep an eye out on Tarte, they do this uh, promotion at least once, probably twice a year, kind of like in the fall and then in the spring. So you can definitely get a chance to do it if you miss this chance. It's a really good opportunity to try a lot of products. I will link everything I used in the description box below. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, comment down below. What did you like? What didn't you like? Um, what Tarte products have you tried that maybe I should try or other people should try? And if there is another brand that maybe I've been neglecting that you want to see a full face of, let me know. Um, um, I would be happy to or if you guys want to see a full face of your favorite products let me know that too and maybe I can like put up some kind of poll where you guys can like message me your favorite foundations and this and that and I can pick the most popular ones and try that out because I do love still putting on makeup uh, for you guys it just gets harder and harder and harder all the time because I don't know what you guys want to see so if you're not already and you would like to be then subscribe to my channel I would really appreciate it and I will catch you guys next time bye